I think that was the same color combination of that repo scud. Ten or 20 years ago, it was really popular for particularly sports and exotic car manufacturers to sell cars that were race cars for the road. But of course, lately, things like the McLaren Senna notwithstanding, they've backed away from that a little bit because most enthusiasts have figured out that race cars are awful on the road. The noise, vibration, harshness just makes them terrible. But what we do like as enthusiasts are some race car bits and so certainly some race car inspiration on the road cars that we enjoy. And I think Ferrari has probably done the best job of that. They've also been doing it for the longest, not just with their GTO sense cars, but really with their end of run mid-engine V8 cars. Because starting with the 348 in the Serie Special and then going into the 355 Fiorano and the 360 Challenge Stradale and the 430 Scuderia and 16M, the 458 Special and Special Aperta, and then now the Pista on the 488, each of these cars kind of represents what most enthusiasts would say we wanted the cars to be from the beginning. And generally, they would say that they're road versions of the race versions of the original road versions of their cars, and they tend to be a great way to kind of boost sales as they're sunsetting a model. And I've always loved them. I mean, this Challenge Rodale to me is maybe the most beautiful car I ever think Ferrari's made. I mean, certainly it's not the most rare or significant, but I just think in terms of the way the car is styled, it's awesome. But with the 430, you really had a lot of technological and roadworthiness advantages over a 360. So the Scud and 16M, I just absolutely adore. And I mentioned before that when I went to go work at Motor Cars of Georgia in 2009, we had at least a couple dozen exotic cars on our lot that had been repossessed from or by Premier Financial Services. And some of these were in really rough shape and had a really bad histories, kind of like Jermaine Dupri's Marcelo we talked about before. But a lot of them were very nice. And one of those cases was a really nice guy that had just fallen on some tough times. And he had two immaculate and beautiful cars that I really loved. One was a Verde Ithaca 08 E-Gear LP640. The other was a 2008 F430 Scuderia. And when he turned them and he surrendered the cars, it wasn't like we had to go out chasing them or, you know, sometimes people would just call and say, all right, I've left the cars here, y'all go pick them up. But in the case of these two cars, he had just given them to us and he would actually come back every month or two and check on the cars to make sure they were still in the same immaculate condition because it was absolutely his goal to save up some money, catch up on his payments, and then get the cars back. It drug on and obviously he never was able to do that. So I ended up selling the LP640 and a few months later, kind of late in 2010, after the, car, the Scud had been there for about a year, the guys from Premier called, they had sold it to another one of the dealers they worked with, but the car sat at Motor Cars of Georgia for about a year, and it always kind of held a special place in my heart because it was the first Scud that I'd ever gotten to drive. With any Ferrari, you can't let them sit for too long. You ought to at least run them around the block. So we would take it on our test drive loop. I got to drive it on several occasions and just love the handling, love the feel. And at that time, when everything's fresh and new, all this race car technology just felt awesome. I mean, that was the best flappy pedal gearbox any of us had ever really felt at that point. Now, fast forward 10 years, what tends to happen with a lot of these cars that have that cutting edge racing technology is that the technology continues to improve. And so as they age, that's always kind of that one apology that you have to make for some of these cars. Like with an Enzo or a Challenge Rodale, you drive the car, it's beautiful, it's awesome, we all have these ultra fond memories of the cars, but when you ride in it, the jerkiness and kind of sloppiness and of the engagement with the sequential gearbox is something I'd say, well, you know, it was really great back then, now we just kind of live with it. And at this point, I would say that a Scud or an LP Generation Gallardo or an Aventador, some of these cars that don't have these newfangled double clutch gearboxes, they're, they're very good, they're very fun to drive, but again, it's just not as engaging. And that's really the issue with a lot of these cars is that road cars aren't just about going fast. They're about having as much fun as possible in the act of driving. As technology progresses, we remove that a little bit from the driving equation. But to me, there are some just high points, especially in the mid and late 2000s, of true driver's cars. And I would say that the Scud is that with the slight asterisk that if it was a manual, it would be a whole lot better. So fast forward into last year, 2018, two interesting things kind of happened that I'd seen in the marketplace. One was a 2007 gray 
Ferrari F430 that was a standard manual transmission had been completely redone as a Scuderia and it sold on Bring a Trailer. It had all the exterior bits, all the interior bits, the carbon door panels, the seats. I mean, someone spent an insane amount of money doing this conversion. It was done extremely well, but underneath it was still really an F430. But I also saw a Craigslist ad in Texas and it said it was a real manual F430 Scuderia. And I thought, that's weird. I know the factory didn't make any of those. They were F1 only. And so I contacted the guy He said, no, we converted it. I said, wow, you know, it's one of those things that people were never really sure could be done. And so I talked to him a little bit about it. He hadn't really set his pricing as to what he was going to charge to keep doing this. And he really wanted to kind of do this one, sell it for a bunch of money and kind of set the market for what these cars should be worth, which is a fairly sound business decision. And so fast forward another few months and I get a call from him and he was asking me more about my interest in ever doing one of these cars. I said, look, I think it's great. I mean, it's a great idea. I'd love to kind of experience the car at some point. And he invited me to fly out to Texas and do it. But unfortunately at the time and really since then, my schedule hadn't permitted me to do so, to go out to San Antonio where they're located. And so, I, but I kept in touch with these guys from European Auto Group who had apparently successfully manual transmission swapped a Scud. And what they said was they didn't exactly use the same manual gearbox that was in an F430. They used the SP2 gearbox and used more race parts for the linkage and the forks and everything else. And it was supposedly just miraculous. And so Matt Farah had gone out and he had driven the car and, and raved about it. Said it was the best Ferrari he'd ever driven, which is obviously high praise for someone who's been in so many phenomenal cars. And then they told me they were taking the car down to Florida for some events and that Freddie Tavares was going to be driving the car. And he called me and said, man, I think it's the best manual car I ever drove. Which again, he just bought a somewhat gated Murcielago, so I was fascinated at that novelty. And so they asked, they said, we're headed back to Texas. We could come through Atlanta and let you drive it. I said, well, <laughs> absolutely. I want to do that. And so they showed up here in Alpharetta and, and I was very, very pleased to have the chance to go out and drive the car. And everything that was awesome about a Scud was still totally awesome about this car. The sound, the agility, the visibility, just the, the ergonomics of the car was all fantastic. But we were without this flappy paddle gearbox, we were able to shift the car. And the shift feel was terrific. It felt like a nice, stiff, excellent gearbox. The clutch was tight. Everything was everything you'd want it to be in a thoroughbred race car. And But at the same time, it felt like a road car, which is the only thing that you don't want a car to give up. Like you don't really want a race car for the road. And having a true manual where you understand I'm giving up a few tenths of a second in any direction I want to travel, but I get to be more involved. It makes the act of driving a lot more special. But as I had seen those pictures, as I had seen Matt's article and seen Freddie post, I noticed the interior on the car was a little bit peculiar. Most F430 Scuderias have kind of a technical fabric ventilated interior on the carbon fiber racing seats, but this car had red inserts and all yellow stitching with yellow Cavallinos on the headrest. I was like, it's kind of a peculiar color combination, as Tabit might put it. It's kind of a ketchup and scrambled eggs interior, which I always thought was a little bit strange. I was like, you know, I think that was the same color combination of that repo scud. I emailed the guys at Premier. I said, hey, check this VIN. Tell me if that's the car that we had this date from the owner. And they immediately responded, yes, it is. In fact, we've made two more leases on that car to other owners since then. They had leased it out when someone had bought it through a different one of their dealers. And they leased it out actually to the guy that owns and runs European Auto Group when he had bought the car. He had since paid it off and they'd run the car through Barrett Jackson, done some other promotional things with the car. And, you know, it had all been really, really cool. And so they were excited to kind of know that and that they were obviously kind of shocked to learn at the extent of modification that had been done to it. But as I learned that and the day before I was headed over to drive the car, I was like, this is super cool. I'm being reunited not only with the first Scud that I ever drove, but now with the first manual Scud that anyone's ever driven. And so I was super excited. I was you know, excited to tell them because it was really cool to have such a VinWiki moment with this car. Our app is really about finding ways to link moments in a car's past with 
where it goes in the future. And so noticing that this was what the first two years or so of this car's existence were like, and then linking it with this awesome new reality that the car's kind of been reinvented as this first stick Scuderia, to me was just fantastic. And they've done other stick F430s and they've also ended up in awesome places like the Geneva Motor Show as a rebodied Stratus and other things of that awesome nature. So I'm, I was really excited to be able to put those dots together like most of our users do. If they go spot an interesting car, they know something interesting about a car. What's great is the chance to kind of zoom out and see how that history comes together and has that kind of magical moment of, oh, it's that car. And that's what this was for me. We'd like to thank Vincero Watches for supporting VinWiki this month. Vincero makes bold, stylish, and well-priced watches out of exceptional materials, and there's a link in the description below for a discount. So check out their website and find the watch that helps make the statement that you want the world to see.